Right, good. Okay, so we'll, we now go back to the free energy equation after seeing that uh, that Phillips uh, video. Uh, and this is the free energy equation which we uh, we talked about. Uh, by the way, uh, with Phillips, we're very fortunate in that, uh, although uh, Phillips died some years ago, uh, one of his uh, relatives actually teaches on the, uh, the the course. That's uh, Mary Phillips Jones. Uh, so she'll be contributing to the uh, glycan biotechnology module. She's an expert on antimicrobial uh, resistance. So uh, that's just an interesting uh, aside. So to go back with the uh, free energy equation uh, again. So delta G equals delta H minus T uh, delta S. So for a reaction to be spontaneous or to react uh, on its own accord, delta G must be the negative. So we all uh, know that. And when the free energy doesn't change anymore, when delta G is, is zero, then the, the system has reached equilibrium. That's the condition for equilibrium, delta G equals uh, zero, or the free energy has reached its minimum. Right, so uh, the ability of a protein to fold and self-associate is governed by that uh, equation. Uh, and this dictates the oligomeric state of, first of all, the folded state of a protein, and then the normal conditions, uh, normal uh, physiological conditions, uh, most proteins are folded. There are uh, some exceptions uh, to that, but most proteins are uh, folded uh, because of the energetics, because it's most favorable that they are folded uh, in uh, a particular uh, way, but also it dictates the oligomeric state, whether you get monomers, dimers, trimers, uh, and so on and so forth, or in some cases, these multi-enzyme complexes consisting of, of, of many, uh, many, many subunits. It's all dictated by the free energy equation. So uh, beta lactoglobulin forms uh, dimers in the, the normal state because the free energy equation, the, the delta G or the G is a minimum uh, when the uh, beta lactoglobulin has formed these, uh, the, 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 these dimers. Hemoglobin under normal situations forms uh, tetramers, non-covalently linked uh, tetramers because delta G is, uh, is a minimum. Uh, when it forms, sorry, G is a minimum, delta G is zero, when these tetramers are, are, are formed. The similar molecule, uh, myoglobin, uh, only forms monomers because it is, if it was to form tetramers, then G would not be at a minimum and delta G equals, uh, would not be equal to to, to to zero, so this equation is is is, is so uh, important. But it's important to realise that the environment can affect the conformation or state of uh, assembly, and uh, these are are some of the key things, key factors which uh, affect the uh, the conformation and uh, state of uh, assembly concentration and this is an issue for example with uh, monoclonal antibody formulations because they're needed at such high concentration there's the concern that these high concentrations can promote aggregation uh, association again because of the the, the thermodynamics uh, if you increase the the, the, the concentration, then uh, energetically, uh, G could be a minimum when the the protein is in an associated state, 
or a proportion of the protein is in an associated state. And vice versa, if you go down in concentration, go down to very, very low concentrations, then a molecule like hemoglobin can actually break up into its constituent monomers. It's called uh, the Chatelier's principle. Uh, we, we learned about at school. Uh, if a uh, system uh, or the conditions affecting a, a system changes, then the system will react to compensate for those uh, changes. So in reducing the concentration, you're reducing the total numbers of molecules. So it comes to a point where the system tries to compensate for that by forming more molecules. And so when a hemoglobin molecule splits into its monomers, it forms four more molecules. So you think of it that way. So concentration can uh, affect uh, the energetics of the state and whether uh, the folded state or particularly the state of oligomerization of the protein. Uh, heat treatment or prior heat treatment. Uh, prior heat treatment can sometimes irreversibly change a, a protein. And in any case, as you increase the, the, the temperature, then uh, proteins can, can unfold because you're disrupting, uh, disrupting bonds and uh, the protein will react to uh, minimize the free energy by unfolding. So uh, heat is an important environmental uh, consideration. pH, pH can affect the electrostatic interactions uh, within a protein uh, molecule, and not only pH, but also the ionic strength. It's something we haven't done yet, uh, but ionic strength can uh, affect the the conformation because what increasing or decreasing the uh, ions in solution ions have an effect for example of of shielding uh, charges on on groups and uh, residues and by uh, changing the ionic strength the concentration of, uh, of of salt ions or electrolyte uh, ions uh, can uh, change that, and then uh, the state of the the protein uh, is it in solution or is it in a a gel or or glassy state? Uh, for example, collagen and and gelatin, two forms of the the same uh, molecule. Uh, one form a solution, the other is a, uh, a, 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 a gel. Uh, so these are factors as well which affect the uh, energetics of the, uh, the, the situation and uh, vice versa. Uh, don't forget we're focusing on proteins at the moment, but these principles also apply to other classes of uh, molecule. And uh, these are some of the values of delta G's. Uh, for these three cases, it's protein uh, folding and beta lactoglobulin, it's for the protein unfolding. And apologies for the, uh, the typo in that example we gave last week. I think I gave you that as 228 and not, and not 238. And so the calculation came out uh, differently, it came out a positive value if you had two to uh, two to eight there. So these are the correct values uh, that we had, and that's uh, uh, the energetics of unfolding of uh, of beta uh, lactoglobulin. So you can see how the delta H and delta S's, so uh, ribonuclease, chymotrypsinogen, myoglobin, you're folding, you're making the protein more ordered, which is unfavorable 
leading to uh, a negative change in the entropy or randomness. But that's comp and don't forget that it's minus T delta S that becomes a positive uh, in the free energy equation. And that's compensated by these uh, high values for the uh, enthalpy change or heat energy change at uh, a constant uh, pressure because of the formation of favorable hydrogen and uh, other uh, bonds. And um, with uh, beta in, in five molar uh, urea, which is a solvent which disrupts hydrogen bonds in the uh, the, the molecule. So uh, the loss of, uh, of, 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 of bonds, so that delta H is positive. That's compensated by uh, an increase in disorder of the uh, system so that delta G is minus uh, 1.7 is negative. So unfolding uh, will take uh, place. So these are the principles of protein folding, which uh, Phillips alluded to in that uh, that, that short uh, video uh, cl uh, clip. Protein folds because it's more fo favorable to be folded. Uh, than unfolded from an energetic point of view. Delta G is negative. Non-polar groups tend to be buried in the interior. The polar groups in the interior tend to form regular structures uh, by the formation of a hydrogen bonding, alpha helices and beta sheets to compensate for the presence of these uh, hydrophilic uh, residues. So the shielded from the hydrophobic groups. There are usually no holes in the center of a molecule. Uh, some structures are further stabilized by disulfide bonds from <laughs> which amino acids have disulfide bonds? So which, which amino acids have sulfur residues or sulfhydryl residues which can be used to form uh, disulfide bonds. Cysteine. Sorry, yeah. Cysteine, yeah. Methionine also has uh, sulfhydryl uh, residues, but cysteine is the main uh, disulfide bond forming residue in uh, in proteins. And these th these are covalent bonds. OK, so and you can get subunit structures coming together uh, reinforced by mm -hmm. these uh, disulfide uh, bonds and sometimes folding can be assisted by uh, helper molecules which are called uh, chaper ch chaperonins. Okay and these are some uh, some of the references which uh, uh, yeah okay this just the, these are all in the all these links are in the the, the, the Moodle, including the uh, the Rasmol, which we're going to do uh, shortly. But any questions on that? No. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do now is go back to our friend DC Phillips again, and just get out of that.